Welcome to our presentation uh, to our for our project uh, Risk and Free Riding: The Choice of Vaccination. Uh, let's uh, quickly jump in into the introduction and motivation of our project. So basically, um, we did an experimental survey uh, to find out what influences the decision in favor of vaccination or against it. And our underlying motivation uh, is basically that uh, the oh, it's basically the COVID-19 pandemic, which is still ongoing. So at the beginning of the, of the course, um, there were still uh, a global aim to create a vaccine and to consequently uh, distribute it and to um, yeah, vac vaccinate enough people to essentially, um, yeah, to, to essentially destroy the virus. And right now, uh, there are multiple vaccines uh, found and it's already started to be distributed in many countries. Um, but there's still a question uh, among many people or a problem rather that um, many people don't want to get the vaccine. And this is basically um, what drive our um, motivation to do this, uh, to do this uh, um, project basically. And we wanted to uh, find out what drives people to get uh, vaccinated or decide uh, against uh, the vaccination. Uh, that's basically, uh, right, like I said, the motivation of this, uh, of this um, yeah, experiment with, that which we did. And um, yeah, consequently, we also uh, asked also in the survey a question about it. But uh, I guess the, the survey part and the um, uh, experiment will be discussed later on in this video. First of all, uh, let's look at the theory. So uh, basically, our theory was grounded on the free riding phenomenon, which uh, in the vaccination context means that if many people uh, have been vaccinated already, uh, a person does not have to get vaccinated to benefit from it. So this person who do, uh, does not get vaccinated uh, profits basically on the uh, behavior of other people who get vaccinated and therefore create a sort of herd immunity, um, yeah, which protects then the person or the people who don't get the vaccine. Um, this is also uh, common in many other um, yeah, social contexts. But for now, we, um, yeah, we, we focus on um, the vaccination uh, scenario. And uh, also in this context, uh, on the COVID uh, situation, there's also, uh, like I said, um, people who want or who avoid vaccination because of concerns of negative health consequences. Um, this is, like I said, um, a big um, problem or question among people. Um, also, lastly, there's, um, of course, basically that people weigh the perceived costs of uh, vaccination against the perceived costs of no vaccination when they make their deci decision. So basically, these um, points or these um, uh, theories built our um, uh, all around theory about what we expected um uh what we will get um from the survey basically and our research question um is does the percentage of the population already vaccinated and the infection rate of a virus influence people regarding the decision towards vaccination um so our first hypothesis mm -hmm. um is that if if the percentage of the vaccinated population increases up to a certain point more individuals decide in favor of vaccina vaccination from then on the relationship turns negative um, so basically it's a reversed u shape um, uh, u shaped function of the probability of people um, deciding in favor of um, the vaccination so that was our theory so in the beginning when there are um, a few people only who uh, get vaccinated, there is a fear of negative health consequences. And therefore, we assume that um, the probability that people decide in favor of vaccination is rather low. And it increases when more and more people get the vaccine. But um, 
but uh, there is no herd immunity left. So after basically a per perceived uh, health uh, a herd immunity um, is achieved, people um, or more people tend to um, benefit from free riding. So therefore we assume that um, yeah, after a certain point of vaccination, people, the probability of people to decide in favor of vaccination decreases again. So this is why we think of a reverse U-shaped uh, function, basically. And then also the second hypothesis is that if the infection rate is high, more people will get uh, vaccinated because uh, obviously the, the probability of getting uh, infected is higher and therefore the perceived costs of no vaccination uh, is also higher. And um, yeah, and also the free riding uh, is also a bit more problematic or harder to benefit from it if there's if the infection rate is higher. So um, that's basically our two hypotheses. And uh, from now on, Karen will take over the presentation. Hey, thank you, Azim. Uh, to test this hypothesis, we have three main variables. Our dependent variable is the vaccination, basically the choice of our respondents between the vaccinate or not. Uh, the main independent variable in this case, uh, our first treatment is the infection rate. Uh, we, we define the infection rate as the, how many people on average uh, are infected person will infect. So basically the infection rate of one means uh, an infected person will infect one other person on average. Uh, we set our infection rate as one, five and 10 uh, to compare the infection rate of COVID-19 is estimated like three. So our rate is pretty good uh, when you compare to COVID-19. Uh, so, and the, our second variable is the population that already vaccinated. Uh, we said five different pop pop population percentage for this variable. Uh, we span between five and 95. Uh, and how, in case of how we allocate these treatments, in the first case, the infection rate, we, in the beginning of the experiment, we divide uh, our respondents in four groups, uh, one for control and three for the every infection rate. And after, when we mentioned the infection rate uh, in, the, in a broad scenario related to uh, imagined disease, every uh, respondent get uh, five questions about the percentage of population already vaccinated. Uh, you can see the example of the treatments here. In the first treatment, uh, the scenario mentioned the infection rate like this. Uh, in the case of control, we don't mention uh, any infection rate. So this part is uh, not there in control group. Uh, and uh, in case of second treatment, we randomly, in a random order, we ask uh, questions with five different uh, percent of population, like uh, in the example. We also control for uh, several different variables in uh, four different sections. Uh, first section is demographics. We ask uh, general uh, socio-demographic variables of respondents for uh, most importantly, the education level and income level, which we uh, expect have an effect on the vaccination behavior on our respondents. The second important part is the health. We, is, as it is a sensitive topic, we ask the health or health question as an, how you think about your overall health and uh, an information about uh, chronic disease and overall diet and uh, overall uh, like uh, sports or uh, that kind of overall lifestyle questions. And finally, we had a question about the uh, COVID-19 and uh, at our response, whether know anybody that uh, gets COVID-19 or tested positive uh, for COVID-19. 
And in final uh, section, we ask about uh, their uh, related their uh, political choices and their risk behavior. In case of politics, we have a basic question uh, of a liberal conservative scale, a position question of a liberal conservative scale, and the trust of the companies and the part of government. And finally, we ask about the risk behavior that we expect to uh, how like risk behavior can affect the vaccination behavior of our respondents. And I think that's all. Uh, I will give you to Leah. Yeah, thank you. Um, and yeah, we actually had the chance to run our experiment. So we want to briefly talk about the results that we got from it. So first thing that we did was to check whether people actually change their opinion dependent or not dependent of or but with the treatment. And we found that 90 participants always decide in favor of vaccination, no matter what else we told them. 15 never vaccinate. Um, and then there's one person who didn't complete the questionnaire, but this person, um, the one time he was asked or she was asked, said that she he would not vaccinate. And 60 people actually changed their decision. Um, so we ran two yeah, more than two, but two important models. One uh, with only our dependent variable and our main independent variables. You can see that the infection rate has a positive effect. So if the infection rate is higher, more people get infected, people are more willing to get vaccinated. And this is significant on the 10% level. Um, likewise, the population vaccinated also has an effect when more people get vaccinated, also more people are willing to then get vaccinated. And this is even significant on the 5% level. Um, interestingly, the interaction of infection rate and the population vaccinated has a slight negative effect, which is significant on the 10% level. Um, and the population vaccinated squared, which is essentially our first hypothesis, um, is not significant at all. Um, when we check for the control variables uh, that we already talked about, you can see that both the infection rate and the population vaccinated have um, still a positive effect, which is even more significant. Um, but the other two variables do not have a significant effect anymore. So what we do find is that uh, once the infection rate um, increases, uh, we have, yeah, we have uh, more people who are willing to get vaccinated. So, so the probability of deciding in favor of that is higher. And likewise, if more people are already vaccinated, again, the probability of getting vaccinated increases. Um, these graphs show that rather nicely, I think, um, that there's this positive uh, connection there. And they also show that there's not, um, not really a U-shape that we can see. Um, so what does that mean? Well, first of all, we have some other variables that are also significant, some control variables that we think are quite interesting. For example, people who have a high confidence in their own parliament tend to um, say that they will get vaccinated more often. On the other hand, um, there's a negative, of, negative effect of being confident in big companies. Um, there's also a negative effect of being more conservative, uh, male or older, um, but taking risks is associated with a positive effect. All in all, we, well, at least partially have to reject the first hypothesis. It is the case that people are more likely to get vaccinated or say that they are more likely to get vaccinated when more people are already vaccinated. But we do not find that this effect um, changes when a large number of people has already been vaccinated. And it was quite interesting to see the comments that people were able to make in an open-ended question because they said, well, if so many people already got vaccinated, why shouldn't I? And it shows that they perceive vaccination as a risk. And if a lot of people are vaccinated, well, it's not that much of a risk anymore. Uh, hypothesis two, on the other hand, we can confirm. 
participants on average are more willing to get vaccinated when the disease is more contagious. Um, so that makes sense. That's it regarding our, our project basically, but we want to look back and take a look at the steps that we took. Um, the first thing that we did with this project was just to think about a topic, broadly surveying the literature, and then to come up with a theory and a very basic experiment. Then we thought about, okay, what are questions that we want to ask and sort of designed a rough questionnaire and then started to implement that. Um, the next step was to fine tune the wording and um, decide on a few more questions. Um, and then we started to write the report, but also to save data and fix a couple of errors. Um, then we got some feedback, which we included into our report. And um, finally, we received our data and prepared and analyzed that. Um, yeah, so that was the implementation, but we did have a couple of problems. Um, some of them are typical for online experiments. For example, the quality of the responses is a, a problem. Um, how can we make sure that people actually think about those questions and actually speak the language and not just rush through it. Um, for that, we implemented an, an understanding check. Um, we also had to make sure that people understood what we were talking about and included some definitions. Um, we also had, however, a couple of problems while implementing it. Uh, for example, saving, saving the data was a bit of a challenge um, and allocating the treatments. We were also not always completely clear about the theory and the treatment just because um, there wasn't a lot out there and to sort of all put it together was not that easy for us. Um, those problems we hope, however, that we've solved more or less at least. Um, we do have, however, also limits and some suggestions for future work. Uh, first of all, that's a big thing. Um, we do not observe the actual behavior of people, but only what they claim their intention is. So we don't see people getting vaccinated. We see them saying, yeah, I'd get vaccinated. Also, um, it's kind of a sensitive topic as it's medically related. And um, it's not always that easy to ask or to come up with questions that you can actually ask. We also think that further research maybe should take place also in the post-COVID era uh, because we can imagine that people right now in their mind are just thinking about risks of vaccination and less about the fact that they, well, that there's like some work attached to getting vaccinated, which might then again still lead to free riding. Uh, we will also take, we would also take a look at what else could influence the decision if there are other factors people take into account. For example, something like um, the success rate of the vaccination, um, but also how, what, how others might, if other people um, in a person's environment might, might affect the decision. Yeah, and that is essentially our problem. Um, we hope it was rather interesting and thank you for listening.